Hello everybody, this is Dale and this is Roy. Hello. We are back on this beautiful warm day. It's a Saturday, our first scrimmage of the season. Roy, you were uh, behind the mound calling balls and strikes. Yeah. Tell me what you saw about this scrimmage. Well, we saw, I think we had saw six different pitchers and we've got uh, quite a bit of depth on the on the mound. Uh, Naaman was throwing hard, he's our number one starter. Uh, he, did, he was throwing very hard. Um, and then uh, we got some freshmen even in there on the mound that had some good pitches, some bad pitches. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But uh, got some live arms that ready to go. Cool, cool. Well, it was a lot of fun. I tell you what, we couldn't have asked for a better day to be out here on the, uh, you know, with the weather being what it is. And uh, and this is a preparation for a big week coming up next week or the following week. Going to Florida. Going to Florida, going to Florida. So I tell you what, if you guys would just hold on for a second, we'll have Coach Adams over here. We'll get his thoughts. Well, Coach, Beautiful day for baseball. I know you got a lot of good things that you saw out there, but I also know that your index cards are full of improving uh, <laughs> things to improve on. What do you think? Yeah, it was good practice. Um, obviously, it was fun just to compete in practice, but that's all it was. It was a practice. It's not like any, we didn't have some kind of glorified scrimmage here where we had attendance and all that stuff. Just, they just try to make practice a little more fun because it's 70 degrees outside. Uh, it was a great opportunity for our guys to face each other. And we're pretty deep right, as far as you know, a D4 goes. So. It was a lot of good pitching, um, so our guys got very quality at bats. And we had two or three arms that have been doing really well and throwing well for us. I didn't get to throw because I called it after six innings because we were hitting a lot, right? So mm -hmm. it took a while. So, but uh, yeah, we had a lot of fun. A lot of things we can learn from. A lot of things we need to do better. But you know, it's uh, it's great to get ready. So now next week in practice, we can clean some stuff up before we get to Florida. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, that's a week from tomorrow. I guess you guys are leaving a week from tomorrow for that. So yeah, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Roy, what you got? I don't know. I, I was mainly watching the pitchers, and then there was some uh, really good arms out there, especially a couple of the freshmen, first time seeing them pitch. That uh, and, and Noah and Alec looked, uh, looked like they've got some real good potential there. Some, yeah. Some really sharp pitches. So, uh, certainly a lot of wild pitches, but. Um, yeah, no, I mean, the freshmen are freshmen, right? Uh, you know what they say the best thing about a freshman is they become sophomores, right? So, <laughs> uh, but they're talented. Uh, Alec, 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 in all honesty, hasn't pitched much, right? Uh, he's got a great arm. Um, but he's so good behind home plate that at the middle school level, he never had to pitch. Uh, Wickline, um, he hit unlimited ceiling, unlimited. Uh, you can't, you don't say that very much. I think the only freshman I've ever said that about was Naaman Anderson when he was a freshman. Uh, unlimited ceiling with Noah. Um, that was really, really hard on Noah. Um, I think when he realizes this game's supposed to be fun because it's really, really hard, we'll see more consistency out of him. But as you said, the stuff. The stuff's electric. He, um, he had three or four pitches that just had nasty movement, hard and yeah. He's and Noah's going to be really good. Now is that going to be this year? I don't know. I don't think he'll be in better uh, position, right? <laughs> I mean, you can't win the Heisman Trophy playing baseball. At least I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, no. If, mm -hmm. if you can, so he just got to relax and remember to have a good time, and he'll do a great job. Right, Noah? What? Right? Just say yeah. <laughs> uh, so he'll he, he, he you know the ceiling's unlimited with him. Uh, honestly, I mean, you got to see the Lukes and the Nates and the Namans and those guys that we've seen a bunch, but uh, I'm a little disappointed that we didn't get to get to John or Brett because they've been throwing really, really good in practice. And I'm really happy with both where both of them are on the mound, and uh, so I'll have to figure that out on Monday. I'll probably let them face our hitters Monday in practice, and that they're in a really, really good position, but honestly, we've been out here for three hours, and I didn't want to go any longer. So, um, but those two have been throwing the ball really, really well, too, so I love where we are as a pitching staff, and you know, obviously, I thought I thought with the stuff that our guys were throwing up there for early March, our hitters, I was really impressed. Yeah, you know, Nick said something about you know wanting to do the doubles record again, and Nick was Nick was doubling it up today. Yeah, Nick's made some swing changes, uh, which has taken four years because he's stubborn. And I love him, but he can be pretty stubborn. Uh, we've made a couple changes with his swing, gives him a little more natural loft. Mm -hmm. Right, he doesn't have to try to force it up. You know, we don't have that little hop in his swing anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, so even the one you saw he missed, he hit about 310, mm -hmm, right? and, mm -hmm. you know, into right center. So, and obviously the one in the left is absolutely yeah, crushed. That was so, nice. um, you know, Nick's, Nick's made a bunch, he's made some major swing changes. So he's in a great position. Uh, our guys have been working hard offensively. Mm -hmm. because, you know, they know that they, we had two hits in the district, you know what I mean? So guys have been hitting all winter long, you know, trying to prove, trying to get better. Uh, you know, Nick obviously had a couple extra base hits. John Wright hit one out that was foul. Um, you know, Nate Scanlon had, a, had mm -hmm. what should have been a double, but freshman base running mistake with Alter, mm -hmm. right? So uh, we'll clean that up. But 
Um, you know, lot, lots of good stuff. I mean, Tomlin hit one over an outfielder's head, you know, and, and those are guys that last year, I mean, I know they've played a lot of baseball and they had good batting averages and this isn't a shot at any of them, but when you're 16 or 15, 16, 17 years old, you know, that ball that you get is an out. Mm-hmm, and now mm-hmm. that you're a senior and you've been in the weight room for three years at mm-hmm. 6 a.m., now the ball's over the outfielder's head, now you get doubles, mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, you saw that from Tomlin, you saw that from Nate, you saw that from Nick and John, and, and uh, you know, so, I mean, I think, and, you know, now now you got the freshmen and the sophomores, mm-hmm. you know, doing the opposite, right? So, you know, it's why the weight room's so important. It's what's made us, our program, you know, big. Sean does a phenomenal job. Now, you don't ever see Sean on field, but I promise you, nobody's made a bigger impact on our program than Sean Rash, right? Because... He's phenomenal in the weight room. I mean, look at me. I'm not getting him in the weight room, right? You know, that's that was the first hire I made when I came to D.C. I called Sean, and I said, hey, we're doing this. You're coming too, right? And he said, absolutely, let's do it. And, you know, he's, he, you know, he, he fosters, so there's a lot of kids in his household. He can't be here every night. But I can tell you what, he makes a gigantic difference for our program at 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. And our guys have physically gotten stronger. They've gotten better in the weight room, all that stuff. So it's made a big difference. Well, they look like, you know, they, they're mentally ready a little bit further along than maybe they have been in the past, too. It looks like they've real again, going back to working hard, to me, it looks look like their mindset is, it's really kind of game game situation, game face, I would call it. Yeah, um, for the most part. Um, I think some of the freshmen, like I said, are trying to do too much. They want to prove to everybody that, hey, I'm, hey, I'm good, you know, believe me, trust me, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. they're all trying to prove that. I mean, I thought that was a great play by Dean at the end of the game, mm-hmm, right, mm-hmm. to end the little scrimmage, a little practice, so... Uh, where he threw the kid out at first, and um, you know, I thought I thought some other freshmen did some stuff, but as you said, with the upperclassmen, they've been here, they've done this. This mm-hmm. isn't new, right? Right. You know, they're sitting here talking about, you know, the freshmen are like, man, wow, this is crazy. But they're thinking about their face and name and these guys, and the seniors are talking about. Remember this game last year when it was so cold, right? Yeah. And that's the conversation they're having because they've been here, they've done this. Mm-hmm. This isn't new to them. Mm-hmm. This isn't. I mean, they're excited, I'm sure, but you know, this isn't too much for them. So. Uh, you saw the big strides that some of these guys have made. And you look at a kid like Isaac Scanlon, who had a big day today. What do you have? Three hits, mm-hmm. yep. right? And uh, he was a freshman last year, in a little and over his head in the same game, right? So the same practice. So you know, we always try to do this on a Saturday so we can families come out, watch us practice, and we let it compete a little. And you know, it's fun. No, they, and they look like they were having fun too. They oh. look like they were enjoying it. And you know, I got to be honest with you. Me and Tim, we started. We changed the name from that from the press box to the sandbox because we're like two kids up there in the sandbox. <laughs> so. Uh, we, we enjoyed that, too. So it was a lot of fun today. I'm sure you missed the press box today, didn't you? I like being out in the field. Okay, calling balls and strikes. So, yeah. So well, calling balls and strikes, maybe not. <laughs> I like being out in the field. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's where you see up close. All yeah. right. You can't so, see much from in there. I mean, uh, you know, obviously, like I said, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with where we were. I mean, I don't know how many hits we had. I don't know if you were tracking. Uh, we counted, I think it was total 14 or 15 by both teams total. Yeah, that's pretty good yeah. for this time of year, right? Pitchers are always ahead of hitters. Yep. And, uh, you know, I thought we had a lot of good hits. I thought... Justin Ladder Ladder was cleared for live at bats yesterday, mm. and you know he hit two missiles. Yep, he did. So Justin can really hit. Um, more importantly, I think he actually had a five pitch at bat. So that's, mm-hmm. good. that's where he needs to be. Yep. That's something him and I have discussed a lot, and I think he understands the priority it is to see pitches. And, uh, but you know, it's a lot of fun. Well, it's interesting to to see the, you know, the video we put out where their goals we put their personal goals on there. So you look at you know Nick wanting to do the doubles thing. You look at uh, Luke Carnegas wanting to do the stolen base thing. And you know I think he had three out here today. So he's creating chaos out there. And I know Justin one of his things was increasing his quality at bats because he wanted to be more patient. He wasn't patient. So it looks like he's he's done that. Yeah. So I mean I think a lot of that goes to the level of kids that we have around here. Um, we just have great people. Yeah, right? they're great people. Yeah, they are. Now, I mean, are they going to? I mean, I'm not. I, I don't. If they play college baseball, that's super. But that's not why we're here. It's about becoming better men, mm-hmm. and they're great kids, right? So, you know, we have that meeting where coach is kind of in mean, right? Um, and I'm brutally honest at the end of the year and the end of the season, we call them our exit meetings, where we're honest and we have direct conversation with kids, and it's the last thing they hear before they get back here, right? So. For a lot of kids, it becomes an obsession, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because they want to prove them strong. They want to work on that thing that we said that they don't do well. And so then it becomes a goal for them, right? right As right. I tell the players all the time, it's just a dream until you write it down. And then right. it becomes a goal. So, you know, I know we got some players that have stuff written on their be- bedroom walls and all kinds of stuff, stuff they're chasing. And uh, I think that's important. And I think all that is, like you said, I mean, I love the goal thing when I watched the video that you made because – it sounds like it's clicking. They understand mm-hmm. what they're trying to do. And if, if each player on the team gets 1% better every day, then we're going to have a great season. Yep. 
Yeah. Um, if we go, well, hey, we won 20 games last year. We're really good, and they don't, then we're going to go 500, and it's going to be a really rough year. So, you know, and so I think every kid on the roster has drastically improved, and it's going to be a lot of fun. That's great. That's great. Well, that wraps it up for today. Um, about a week from tomorrow, the team's going to take off and head for Vera Beach, Florida. We're looking forward to a good time down there. We're looking forward to being in Florida where the weather's going to be nice and warm, where it looks like it's going to be 30s in the 30s and 40s here again. So I'm looking forward to that. So um, until next time, this is Roy. And this is Coach Adams. And I am Dale, your voice. We're out.